Good morning friends. Today we are going to see the next point on the topic mathematical methods that is a vector product and or cross product. Friends, in last grade we have seen about the dot product. Now we are going to see today the vector product of the cross product. So first we see start with the definition. Let us consider this is a vector p and this is another vector that is a vector q and theta is the angle between them now what is a vector product the vector product can be represented by this one vector here it is considered this is a vector r okay so i am writing in the format vector r is equal to vector p cross vector q that is a p q sin theta into u cap so u cap is a rational vector so what is the definition of the vector product of cross product the cross product of given two vectors can be represented by the third vector which is equal to product of magnitude Distributive law. 
distributive law. So vector p cross vector q plus vector r. We can write it as a p vector p cross vector q plus vector p cross vector r. So what is the first characteristic that the vector product do not obey commutative law? Then you write this. Second characteristic the vector product obeys distributive law. Third characteristic the self cross product of given vector is zero. Now what is the self cross product? It means vector P cross vector P. So we can write P into P into sin theta into u cap. Remember u cap is the dimensional vector and here if theta is equal to 0, if theta is equal to 0, because as we are taking the product of the same vector, so angle between them is 0. So what is value of sin 0? Sin 0 and the value 0. So we can write if theta is equal to 0, then vector p cross vector p, we can write p into p sin of 0, that is a 0. So the same cross product of given to vector is equal to 0. That is the third characteristic. Now, fourth characteristic the cross product of two adjacent sides of parallelogram the cross product of two adjacent sides of parallelogram will give us the area of parallelogram Okay, the cross product of two adjacent sides of parallelogram will give us the area of parallelogram. So, in order to understand this, I am going to draw the parallelogram here. So, you know that the parallelogram, the opposite sides are equal. So, suppose this is A, B, C, D, with a parallelogram, and here we have the perpendicular, suppose here is P perpendicular, theta is an angle, right? This is a vector. Yeah, I have drawn. A, P is a perpendicular here, right? Suppose this is a vector Q and this is a vector R. Then, in order to find the area of parallelogram, what we can write? Area of parallelogram. This is equal to vector q cross vector r. So these two lines will indicate that we are taking the magnitude. Okay, so the cross product of two adjacent sides of the parallelogram give us the area of parallelogram. And in order to find the area of parallelogram, what we have to do? We should take the cross product and then we should find its magnitude. Now fifth characteristic regarding the component. The component of cross product can be represented as okay, suppose I have vector P is equal to I cap P S plus j cap py plus k cap pz and vector q is equal to i cap qx plus j cap py plus k cap qz and if I want to take this cross product then I can write vector p cross vector q is equal to here you have write 
I cap, J cap, K cap, P X, P Y, P Z. And here Q X, Q Y, Q Z. Okay, again I am going to explain all these five characteristics once again. What is the characteristics first? That the vector product do not obey commutative law. It means if we reverse an order, we are not getting the same answer. Second, the vector product obeys distributive law. When vector p cross with vector q plus r is equal to vector p cross vector q plus vector p cross vector r. Third, the same cross product is equal to the the same cross product of given vector is zero. So if I am taking vector p cross vector p, then I am getting the answer as zero. Next characteristic is the cross product. Of two adjacent sides of the parallelogram will give us the area of parallelogram. So, in order to find the area of parallelogram, what we have to do? We should take the cross product. So, here is vector Q and vector R. These are adjacent sides. So, they take the cross product and find its magnitude. So, we can find out the area of parallelogram. Next, the component of cross product can be represented as vector P is equal to I cap P X plus J cap P Y plus K cap P Z. Vector Q is equal to I cap P X plus J cap P Y plus K cap P Z. Then vector P cross vector Q is equal to I cap J cap K cap P. Here we are getting the terms of the determinant P X P Y P Z P X P Y Q Z. So these are the characteristics regarding with the cross product. Okay, so we are going to see now the next six characteristics regarding the cross product. So here some special cases. Vector P cross vector Q is equal to P Q sin theta into U cap. So here I am taking the case one. In this case, I am asking for the CET J only T convention. If theta is equal to zero, then here sin zero zero, so we can write vector P cross vector Q is equal to zero. So we can make this sentence that the if the angle between the two vectors is zero, then the cross product is also equal to zero. Case two. If theta is equal to 90, then okay. If theta is equal to 90, what is the value of sin 90? Sin 90 is equal to 1. So we can write vector p cross vector q is equal to p q. What is multiply of p of p and q? The is the product of their magnitude. Remember, when we are not writing the vector, it will become called as a magnitude. So if theta is equal to 90, then P cross Q is equal to P Q sin theta substitute sin theta is equal to 90 and sin theta is equal to 1 so we are leaving to P Q at the end the direction of vector they are also given. Case 3 if theta is equal to 1 again then vector P cross vector Q so here we have to take at the P Q and then we have to write as a 180. So, what is the value of uh, sin 180? Sin 180 has to be 0. What we can say that the product of two anti parallel vectors is here equals to 0. Or the cross product of two vectors in the angle between them is 180 degree, then it is also 0. So, these are some special cases. On the same point, we can take regarding the example. So, what is the example of cross product? There are not many examples. Out of that, vector B is equal to vector omega cross vector R, where V equals to linear velocity omega is equal to angular velocity and R equals to radius. This is the example regarding with the Cross product. So, friends, we have studied the, uh, we have completed the point regarding the 
characteristics of the cross product now we are going to see the next point regarding with the distinguishing between the dot product and the cross product distinguish between dot product that is also known as a scalar product and cross product so this question is asked in the examination for the two marks so for two marks minimum four points you should try so here i am writing the heading as a dot product and it is also known as a scalar product and second here cross product it is also known as a vector product okay so first point the dot product of given two vector can be defined as the product of magnitude of two vectors and sine angle between and cosine angle between them okay so what is the first point i am writing this symbolical format you have to make this sentence and then you should write this symbolical format so what is the first the point that the dot product of given two vectors is equal to product of magnitude of two vectors and cosine angle between them here in the cross product you have write first point the cross product of given two vector can be defined as the product of magnitude of two vectors and sine angle between them so pq sin theta friends here i am not writing the diagonal vector so that it will be very easy for you to make the sentence the cross product of given two vector can be defined as product of magnitude of two vectors and sine angle between them second the dot product of two perpendicular vector perpendicular vector is zero so the dot product of two perpendicular vector is equal to zero and here the cross product of two perpendicular vector perpendicular vector is equal to product of magnitude of two vectors so the dot product of two perpendicular vector is zero the cross product of two perpendicular vector is equal to the product of magnitude of two vectors third point you can write that the dot product obey commutative law the dot product obey the commutative law here you can write the cross product do not obey commutative law so you can print the sentence so this is a second point and this is a third point here fourth point you can write regarding the dot product is that the dot product the dot product do not have direction they do not have direction and here you can write that the cross product of vector product have direction this is the fourth point Fifth point we can write here in the example that the dot product work is equal to vector f dot vector s. And here we can write the example linear velocity b is equal to 
vector omega cross vector r. Friends, again I am going to make the sentence that the dot first point, the dot product of given two vector can be defined as a product of magnitude of two vectors and the cosine angle between them. The cross product of given two vector can be defined as a product of magnitude of two vectors and the sine angle between them. The dot product of two perpendicular vector is zero. The cross product of two perpendicular vector is equal to the product of its magnitude of the two vectors. The dot product obeys the commutative law. The cross product do not obey the commutative law. The dot product do not have a direction. The cross product have a direction. The example of the dot product is a vector W is equal to vector F dot vector S. The cross product or the vector product for the example vector P is equal to vector omega cross vector R. Okay, so this is the distinctive point. Now we are going to see the numericals. Okay, friends, today we are going to see the numericals. Here I am going to read the first question. If vector P is equal to four i cap minus j cap plus eight cap, eight eight k cap, and vector Q is equal to two i cap minus m j cap plus two k cap, find m if vector P and vector Q have same direction. Okay, so this is one question. Friends, we should write one sentence. If the vectors are in same direction, same direction, then its ratio is same. Okay, so we have take the ratio. Of the first vector p and vector q, vector four upon two is equal to here is a minus one, minus one upon minus m is equal to eight upon four. Now the next step here two upon one is equal to one upon m is equal to two upon one. Now you can compare with the LHS or RHS sign. So I can write here two upon one is equal to one upon m. So the cross multiplication is two m is equal to one. So m is equal to half. So this is the final answer. So such kind of the questions we will ask the formulas CET, JE, and the next examination. Very simple questions here. Remember that if two vectors are in the same direction, then it's Ratio is the same. Now we move to the further question. Find the area of parabola if vector p and vector q are given. So what is vector p? I cap plus two j cap plus three k cap, and vector q is equal to two i cap plus j cap plus four k cap. Okay, now I am going to write the solution. So first we should write. We know that the cross product we have to take in order to find the area of parabola. So vector P cross vector Q. Then we can write in the I cap plus J cap plus K cap. Then write the coefficients. So I cap for the coefficient one. Here two. Here is a three. For the vector Q, the coefficients are two, one, and four. So vector P cross vector Q is equal to I cap. Take this I cap. Now this row and this column will be get cancelled, and, and we should do the cross multiplication of these two numbers. Two multiplied by four minus one multiplied by three. Then we should take the minus J cap. When we are taking the J cap, remove this row and this column, and do the cross multiplication. One multiplied by four minus two multiplied by three plus K cap. When we are taking K, take this determinant one multiplied by one minus two multiplied by two. So what is the important thing you should remember that for taking the J cap, you should write the negative sign. So this thing you should always remember. Now vector P cross vector Q. Okay, so four multiplied by two eight, three multiplied by one three. So eight minus three, it is five. So five i cap. 
here one multiply by four four three to the six so four minus six we are getting minus two minus two multiply by minus three is the plus two j two j cap and one multiply by one one and two multiply by two four one minus four we are getting minus three k cap okay so we have got the cross product but friends this is not the area of parallelogram in order to find the area of parallelogram you should take the magnitude and in order to find the magnitude you should write the vector p cross vector q remember for the cross product you should write only up to this but in order to find the area of parallelogram we have to write this symbol this is called as a magnitude so we know how to calculate the magnitude write the square root take this number 5 square plus take this number 2 square plus take this number minus 3 square what is the square of 5 25 plus 4 plus 9 so what is the final answer so 5 plus 4 9 9 plus 9 18 So final answer we are getting is thirty eight. Okay, so that is a vector P cross vector Q. It is magnitude. So we can write here so area of parallelogram is root thirty eight units. So this will be our final answer. So friends, I have given two numericals. Based on how to do the cross product, based on this, you are able to solve the loss of numerical. So I am going to give you two questions for homework. Here is the question for homework. Vector A is equal to two i cap plus j cap plus three k cap, and vector B is equal to i cap minus j cap plus Find the cap. Find vector A cross vector B. So A cross B, if you should write only up to this, not necessary to find the area. Okay, that is the first question. Second question, I am going to give you for the whole work. Here, find area of parallelogram. Okay, find the area of parallelogram of the given same vectors. Okay, so you should write the next question in the same way. Find the area of parallelogram of vector A cross vector B, which forms the adjacent sides. And then again, you should find this vector, and then you should proceed for the magnitude. So I am giving the same question. So first you have to find the cross product, and then you have to find the area. So you have to try it in two different manners. So I hope you have. Regarding the cross product, so friends, today we have completed our topic because the next part from this topic is difficult from the syllabus. So here we have completed the topic mathematical methods, make some proper note and try to solve the numericals. So from next three hours, I am going to start the new topic from from the section first. Friends, whenever when you will come at the college for exchanging your books, you can give your notes, you can check to uh, you can check out. Your notes from the teachers, and as well as if you have any kind of the doubts, then you can answer. Thank you. Have a nice day.